Hello everyone and welcome back to designing a website in Figma. In today's video I'd like to create additional pages for our website and also set up a prototype so that you can click through these individual pages. Before we get started on that um, let me walk you through a couple things that I only realized after I finished filming the previous episode. Let me launch the prototype and show you what I mean. In the previous episode we have created a global auto layout meaning we made Sure that this whole website is now an auto layout meaning you can easily switch stuff can easily adjust sizes and do all the things that auto layout allows you to do what we did is we included the header menu the header right here in our auto layout and let me show you what this does so if i now scroll down you can see how the header disappears and we would like to have this header fixed so we kind of turned off this feature that we have set up all the way back in the first episode i believe so that is one thing that will have to be fixed and the other thing is when we scroll down here to the frequently asked questions section and when i now click one of these um, questions right you can see what is happening so usually, or ideally, what you'd like to see is this accordion animating. And apparently because of the fact that we have tagged everything within an auto layout, Figma now does this. Um, it's, this is most likely a bug, right? So this, is, so this is definitely not intentional. And we also need to fix this. So how do we do that? What I'm gonna do is select this website, this website auto layout, and then rename this to website auto layout container. And right now, when I rename this uh, website auto layout, I'm going to select it, the whole thing, right? The whole website and press command option G, which is going to create a frame around our auto layout. So when I now expand this frame, you can see how we get the website auto layout container within that frame. This means you can move the entire website, the entire website auto layout, right? Now I'm gonna rename this frame to website. And let's test if this helps us with the accordions. So let me scroll down and you can see that now it behaves correctly. So I have, honestly, I have no idea why this is happening, but as you can see, it is happening. So we want to keep this animation intact. So let's just use this structure, right? So we have basically put the auto layout uh, or the other way around, we have created a frame on top of our auto layout, which fixed this problem. And now for the header, it used to be fixed and it is not which means we can now just simply select this header right within the website auto layout container and i'm gonna put that outside of this auto layout meaning it's gonna be directly in the website frame and now what i'm going to do is move this website website auto layout so that there is no distance between the header and the website right so exactly zero points i'm also gonna turn on the fill for this website that's gonna be white. And then with this header selected, I'm going to go over here to constraints and click on fixed position when scrolling. So let's analyze what we have here. We basically have a frame that it contains two things. It contains a fixed header right now and contains a scrollable website auto layout container. Now, when we check the prototype again, let me reset this. You can see that it's, you know, the header is staying in one place, so that's fixed. And with these uh, frequently asked questions, they are also animating. So these are the two things I wanted to fix after I finished recording the previous episode. And now let's get started with what I actually planned for this episode. Multiple pages. As you can see from our header menu, we will get at least one, two, three, four, four or five additional pages apart from the home page and just to not have a generic placeholder over here in the second page uh, button I'm just gonna change the second page to let's say I think this could be for example integrations right so let's say this is going to be integrations I'm gonna select this menu item component within the header component right and then change the text right here so that's what we did and then I'm going to create five additional frames, five additional pages. So let me copy this. First of all, rename this website to homepage, right? Because this is the homepage now and we're gonna get different page names. So uh, keeping one at website doesn't make really sense. So let me copy this over here. I duplicated this whole homepage 
and then I'm gonna remove this. So in this episode, we are not going to be creating all of these five pages because that would take hours to create, honestly. We're just gonna prepare our structure for these and we're just gonna make sure that our navigation is set up correctly. So since this is the home page, this could be the features page, right? So let me rename this to features. Then we get what? Integrations. So let me duplicate this again and then let me type in integrations. And then what's next? Uh, customers, right? So let's duplicate that again and rename this to to customers. Then there's also about us. So let me duplicate this again and rename this to about us. And finally, there's the contact us page or reach out to us. So let me duplicate this one last time and let me rename this to contact us, right? So now we get six different pages, including the home page, right? And with multiple pages, the component based approach that I keep talking about, meaning using components to generate individual parts of the website, right? Individual uh, components like header, footer, and also buttons, etc., really comes in handy with multiple pages. Let me show you what I mean. So, right now, what I have here is six different pages with six different instances of the header component and six different instances of the footer component. Now imagine you want to change one single thing in a footer, right? So let's say we want to change link one to first link. Had we not used the footer section as a component right here, we'd have to go one by one each instance and change that link and then make sure everything is consistent. That would be a giant waste of time. So let me just go to the component, retype link one to first link and watch as I change the link on all these instances, right? First link, first link, first link, first link, etc. This is best visible when I, for example, change the background of the footer, right? Watch all the footers change colors, right? So I know I keep repeating this in almost every video that I make, but this is absolutely essential. If you want to be a good and efficient Figma designer, an efficient user experience or user interface designer, you definitely have to know how to use components and instances. So let me now use placeholders for individual headlines. Let me type in features on the features page and I'm gonna use H1 as the headline. So we get features right here, right? So this is just placeholders so that we know on what page we currently are. Integrations, then we get um, customers, then we get about us, and finally we get contact us. So now that we have established individual frames for our individual pages, we have home page and the five remaining pages, we can start prototyping. Now this means I'm gonna go over here to the prototype mode and start defining the interactions with our header component. So I'm going to define multiple connections from this component to individual pages. And if I define these connections right here, you might have already deduced that these connections are going to be present on all these instances. Let me show you what I mean specifically. Let's say that I would like this logo to always lead to the home page, right? That's a very common thing. That's a convention that we can safely say almost all the websites use that, right? So let me select this logo in the header component and connect that logo to the home page, right? So I'm connecting the logo to this home page. On click, navigate to home page, and this is gonna be instant. So we're gonna instantly click over, transition over in an instant to this page. And when I now go through individual pages, right? So features, integrations, customers, you can notice how we have this connection here as well. So if you define an interaction on a component level for this header right here, they are going to be reflected across all instances of this header component. And this is extremely important and extremely time-saving. Let's say you'd get 200 pages on this website. Imagine going individually one by one on each page and setting up this interaction again and again whenever you'd like to make change. With this structure, you're easily able to do that from a single place, right? So header leads to, sorry, the logo leads to the home page. This also means that if I now select the features menu item, right? Features menu item, I can now connect that to features and from all the remaining pages, 
the features menu item is going to lead to the features page as well. So you can now see the power of prototyping of, uh, of interactive components, of prototyping on the component level in its full strength. So then we have integrations, which means again, selecting this and connecting that to integrations. Then we have customers. Then we have about us. And finally, we get the contact page. Reach out to us. And that's gonna lead all the way to contact us page. So right now, notice how when I go through individual pages, we have all these interactions are present. And of course, if we get, for example, the integrations page, the integrations button is gonna lead to itself, essentially, right? So nothing is gonna happen, really. So now let me launch the prototype. Press R to make sure this is reset and also yeah let's set up a flow starting point so now the flow starting point is on the header which is not what we need we need to remove this flow starting point and put the flow starting point on the home page right and we're gonna call this website so now when i launch the prototype i'm gonna start on the home page frame i can now scroll through our website I can look at our beautiful horizontal cards. I can see these customers that we have created in previous episodes. I can also take a look at frequently asked questions and then I can go over to features, integrations, customers, about us, and reach out to us. And I can also go back to the homepage. Now, this is really starting to feel like an actual real website, doesn't it? You can see how we get these hover states and when I click on these buttons, it's gonna take me to these different pages. So this prototype that we have set up right now is extremely, extremely convincing. So you can now send this over to your client and they can click through these individual pages and they can basically navigate this website as if it were an actual real website, but it isn't, right? It's just a bunch of designs connected cleverly together thanks to Figma. And that's how you set up a global navigation prototype on a website in Figma. In the upcoming episodes, we're gonna be working on these individual pages and then we are also going to be finalizing the design overall plus creating a mobile version. So if you'd like to learn more about web design in Figma, definitely make sure to subscribe to never miss a new episode of Design a Website in Figma. As you can see, there is a lot of things yet to cover, so this series is not going to be over anytime soon. And also, additionally, if you'd like to see how we created all these components, how we, for example, created the header menu, how we created these features cards, these icons, these quotes, this call to action, these accordions, and the footer section, everything that we have right here, make sure to check the playlist in the description below where all of these episodes are compiled. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning into this episode of designing a website in Figma, and I will see you in the next one.